Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to create a chainmail bracelet. As you can see from our examples here, we have two different styles of bracelet. The silver bracelet is the one that we're going to actually learn to make today and it's called box weave. So with, with chainmail, what we need is we need a lot of jump rings. So jump rings are small circles of metal that have been cut open so we can open and close them and weave them into the designs. So in your kit, you're going to be getting 200 of the silver plated copper jump rings and 200 of the gold plated copper jump rings. You're also going to get two gold clasps, two gold plated clasps and two silver plated clasps. The only equipment that you're going to need to be able to create this bracelet is you're going to need two pairs of chain nose pliers. So if I just move this one out to the side. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually attach our jump rings to our clasp as a starting point. So to be able to do that, we need to firstly learn how to open and close our jump rings. So as you can see, you can see there that I've got a jump ring in my pliers. Now I'm right-handed, so my right hand is my dominant hand and my left hand is my non-dominant hand. So if you're left-handed, it's the other way around. So I've got the jump ring with the small saw cut at the top and all I'm going to do is holding onto that jump ring with my left hand, I'm now going to use the pliers in my right hand to turn the jump ring upwards towards me, so north to south or like you're opening a door. We never open a jump ring that way, east to west, because it will never go back together as a circle. Now when we're closing our jump rings, we need to do exactly the same movement, so the, my non-dominant hand stays still, which is my left hand. My right hand's gonna move that edge of the jump ring back together until you can feel the jump ring go back together and you've got a seamless join all the way through. So it's good just to practice just opening and closing a few of those jump rings to get them nice and seamless. So you need to actually open quite a few of your jump rings. So for a bracelet that's about seven inches long, you probably need to open about 150 of your jump rings. So that can be quite a long task to start with. So if you just spend the time just to open all your jump rings, then when you're weaving them into your design, it will create a lot faster and a lot easier to remember the pattern. So I'm gonna take my clasp and I'm going to just open one of my jump rings and I'm going to just add one jump ring onto my, jump, my, my clasp. So I've just got a little hole at the bottom of my clasp and I'm just going to close that jump ring up, just giving it a little wiggle just to make sure that that jump ring now is as tight and close as it can be. So this is my starting point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pop this one down to the side and I'm going to show you the weave on some really large coloured jump rings so you can see where the pattern is going to start to evolve. So if I just move those to the side, what I've got here is I've got a purple jump ring which is going to emulate that very first jump ring that we've just added and a little piece of wire which I've just just for me to hold on to that's going to emulate what your clasp. So my first movement is to add two open jump rings to that first clasp ring. So I've got one and that's my second. So as you can see now, so I have my jump ring that's attached to my clasp and then two closed jump rings. I'm now going to add another two jump rings to the previous two. So I've got another pair of jump rings going through both of those jump rings, so make sure that they go through both of them and close. So I now have my jump ring from my clasp and then two pairs of jump rings. What I'm going to do now is turn it the other way up. So I've now got my two pairs at the top. Holding on to that single jump ring, I'm going to let the first pair fall either side of my hand. Taking them with my pliers, so I, in this instance I'll just use my fingers, pick up the second pair and let the first pair fall either side of the clasp jump ring. Giving them a squeeze, once you squeeze them all together, what will happen is that first pair will pop up a little bit higher than that clasp jump ring. You're then going to open up the second pair and then bring these two jump rings together and this will form your first Byzantine knot or your box weave knot. So I'll just do that again. So take hold of the jump ring that's attached to the clasp, let the first pair fall either side of your, your fingers, picking up the second pair 
and giving them the first three a squeeze together, opening up the second pair again, and there's the first pair right in the middle, ready to then take another open jump ring and collect those two up. When I give that a little pull, you can see it pops up into that lovely knot. So I'm gonna close that jump ring, and then because we're doing this jump ring weave in pairs, I'm gonna add another jump ring exactly the same route. So it's just going through exactly the same place that the first one did. So that's my first little section. So every time we need to do one of these box weave knots, we always need two pairs of jump rings. So this is my first pair. I'm gonna add on another pair so you can see the pattern starting to evolve. So I'm just gonna add on my next pair of jump rings and close. So I've now got, again, two pairs of jump rings that I can now fold back to create this section here. So again, holding on to your chain now, you let the first pair fall either side of your hands, of your fingers, picking up the second pair, give them a squeeze together. When you open up that second pair, the two jump rings that you need to collect are there sticking up higher than all the other jump rings. So as I pull that together now, you can see how I've got my next knot on top of my first one. So again, close that jump ring up and again, going through and doubling that pair up. So I've now got two of my box weave knots sitting one on top of the other. So again, now to carry on, I have one pair already here. I just need to add on my second pair before I can do the knot again. So there's one and there's my second one. So I can now fold these back into that Byzantine knot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you on the correct size jump rings with the pliers, how it will actually work in the correct size jump rings. So as you can see here, I've done quite a few knots. So I've got my little section of, Byzant, uh, of box weave, sorry. And I've got my two jump rings at the very end. I've also got a little pile of open jump rings ready to weave in, so everything's ready. I have my pliers where I need them. So my first movement is to let those first two jump rings fall either side, picking up the second jump rings and giving them a squeeze. What you'll then find when you open those two up is your two jump rings are ready to collect with your first open jump ring. So we've got our first jump ring through and it's pulled up into that same knot formation so you know you've got the jump ring in the correct, in the correct way because it's created these beautiful box knots all the way down. So I take my other pair of pliers now, holding my non-dominant hand still, just twisting my dominant hand to close that jump ring making sure it's as closed and it's as flush as it can be, so it doesn't scratch or have a weak point that could then become open. Taking another open jump ring, popping that through exactly the same space next to the previous jump ring that I've just added, and again, close that jump ring nice and tight. So there I've got now my next knot already in place. So, so to move on again, I now know that I need to put another pair of jump rings just onto that one so I then have got my two pairs of jump rings so I can do the knot one more time. So there's my first jump ring and there's my second jump ring. And then again, let them fall either side of your hand, of your fingers, picking up Picking up those second, that second pair of jump rings, giving them a squeeze. And when you open up that first pair again, there are your two jump rings that you need to add in. Right, with most jewellery making, it is practice to get the jump rings in the correct order. But after a few goes and a few knots, you'll see that pattern starting to evolve and it'll become a lot easier for you to actually make. So when we're attaching the other end of the clasp, what we're using is we're using just one single jump ring as I just popped in there, so then I can use my clasp and open and close that trigger clasp onto that single jump ring. So if I show you on the finished product what we've got, 
we've just got the one single jump ring in the middle that's going to then hold everything together. And then to do your clasp up, all we need to do is open, pop in, and there you have your finished bracelet and clasp.